for many for many Hello and welcome back to the After Ellen podcast. I'm your host, Jocelyn McDonald, Editor-in-Chief, and I'm joined with Gabrielle Alejandro, one of our writers here. Gabby, did you know that I hit record? <laughs> I didn't say anything. I uh, Yeah, I noticed. I saw it on the bottom. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I am, I'm really tired today. I and I'm not, I'm not going to be normal on this podcast. I know I'm not going to be normal. Um, so sorry in advance. So Gabby, it's 2020 in just a couple days. Are you pumped? I mean, I sure. <laughs> I can't like comprehend the progression of time anymore. So mm. January feels like 3000 years ago. Yeah. Um like basically March 342. Yeah. Is what day it is. So, do you have any resolutions for 2021? Survive. <laughs> wow. And what are you doing to promote your survival? Are you are you learning bushcraft? I'm Are you been watching a lot of uh been watching a lot of Man vs. Wild, you know? Okay. <laughs> as far as what survivor about you? shows, my f- um my favorite survivor show is Naked and Afraid, for sure. Oh, right. Um, That's me when I get out of the shower and I hear a weird noise in the kitchen. Really? <laughs> I'm never afraid. Um, my resolutions for 2021. Mm-hmm. What am I working on? I I I was just thinking about this. I I feel like I, I'm never the person that makes resolutions to like meditate more or get in shape. But this year, I want to do that because I really want to go hiking on the Appalachian Trail a lot more. I put so last year, my New Year's resolution was to hike like 100 miles. And I did that this year. And so obviously, this year, I have to top that by a lot. Um, But I am um, just a small lesbian. And it's going to take a lot of training. Um, What else do I want to do? I want to like spend more time. I can recommend. I can recommend some protein powders for you oh, if you want. I want to get jacked like you, Gabby. And also, I, I do still think we need like an After Ellen um, exercise series so we can all be as jacked as Gabby. I feel like I'm not as jacked as you all think I am. <laughs> <laughs> the Zoom camera does not lie. I'm wearing a or maybe really, it does. I'm maybe wearing, it adds ten pounds. I went out of my way to like put on a really like loose track jacket today. <laughs> <laughs> you do look like Sporty Spice right now. Oh, thank you. I try. Um. So yeah. So those are my resolutions. I think that I I I feel a little bit goofy about like wanting to ha- have typical resolutions like getting in shape and meditating. So I need to round that out with um, some more exciting resolutions. I think maybe I just need to sit with it. Unless you have any suggestions. I think you should write more. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jay, I, you know, I probably should. I, I do. It's hard when you are the editor and no one edits you. Yeah. Hint, hint. Yeah, maybe okay. you could edit me. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. All right. Um. I'm just going to be casually hitting my vaporizer throughout this podcast because it's the first day of my period and y'all, oh, it's not it's not comfortable. It's hard. It's a really difficult it's impossible to be comfortable when you're on your period. Can you believe that I'm upright right now? I can't. This I feel right like I'm here an accomplishment that you're yeah. upright. Yeah. So today's topic is really exciting. I think this was obviously a year to remember, but we're going to be remembering it for all the right reasons. We're not going to talk about anything annoying on this podcast today. We're only going to talk about the best of 2020, the top in every category of 2020. It's just going to be excitement and yeah. um, Good vibes only. Good vibes only. Yes. Okay. So Gabby, we've made a list of the our categories that we want to go through the top of everything. What do we got? What's first up on the list? Let's start with TV, actually. I feel like there was there was a lot to talk about TV-wise. Let's start with TV. 
Okay, what's your what's your top TV? Top TV. I think because this is the one that I remember the most was Bly Manor. Because that oh my God. got me. That got me. <laughs> that was so fucked up. Yeah. I And I loved the experience of, you know, watching pretty much all media that has lesbians in it with you mm-hmm. at this point because we're, we're going to podcast about it at some point. Right. So watching that, you know, a couple day, a couple episodes ahead of or behind each other and just, you know, getting messages like it's not scary. Oh, wait, I'm scared now. <laughs> like, yeah, I remember you texting tragic. me like, oh, I'm so afraid to like go outside. Like what if something gets me? I'm like, fuck, should I even finish watching this? But yeah, I finished it and it wasn't that bad. But it was tragic. But it was also yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it was like I don't I wasn't I wasn't losing sleep over it because I was scared. I was losing mm-hmm. sleep over it because I needed to like listen to landslide for four hours and cry. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> yeah, so I was just like feeling yeah, a lot of emotions. I really liked Victoria. Yeah. I mm-hmm. was just gonna say I really liked uh the performances. I really liked Victoria Pedretti in it and I love her. She's got those giant eyeballs. I, you oh, know, her, this her year was actually that one? this year was a great year for actresses with giant eyeballs and stellar couture. Um, mm. So one of the, the one of my top TV <laughs> one of my top TV picks this year was uh, Killing Eve, and right. I I I've always loved Sandra O. Oh. I've always uh, since you know her role as Christina on Grey's Anatomy. I've, I've been a super fan of Grey's for a long time, although less so this year for reasons that are annoying. And so they will not be mentioned, but Jodie Comer, only- I had no idea about. <laughs> yes. I had no idea about Jodie Comer until Killing Eve. And the third season is, is it's just each season is getting more exciting. I love the relationship between them and they, and they smooched. It was weird. But then they're they're it talking about weird. like a uh, future together, and it was so weird. <laughs> but I think <laughs> I don't know. I want to see them hook up for sure. Like I would watch a couple more seasons of this. They just have to, see to at this point. It, they have to. They can't leave us like that. They have to hook up at this Jody- point. Yeah, Jodie Comer can do like forty five perfect flawless accents. I don't know how she is the way that she is, but. It's so hot. I actually have in my Hinge profile, you know, it says like, uh, I go crazy for or something or Mm -hmm. what will win me over. And my answer to that is um, women who can do convincing comedic accents. And I think people think that is an absurd thing to want in a partner. But look at Killing Eve and tell me that Jodie Comer's of fluency in so many accents is not totally hot and spicy god you got that you got me there okay yeah i mean it takes a lot of skill to do that i think people think you can just do it and then it's it's gonna be fine but it takes a lot of skill to be that good in that many accents you know it means that she's a good listener Mm mm-hmm she you know what i was gonna say something but never mind continue (laughs) Um, I was also going to say The Wilds. Maybe it's because I watched it so recently because it just I dropped. I just wrote about The Wilds. I, I know, and I can't wait to read your piece, which will hopefully be on the site tomorrow. I need to, that'll be what I do tomorrow morning. But, um, yeah, what did you think? Did you like it? I didn't dislike it. You know, it was very okay. bingeable. It was very, it was very bingeable. It, listen, I have this standard for teen shows, right? It's Dairy Girls at the top. And I feel like oh, nothing can Dairy touch Girl. Dairy Girls. <laughs> nothing can touch Dairy Girls at this point. And I would say that the Wilds is maybe like here and like, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, yeah. I mean, I watched the whole thing. I didn't get angry. <laughs> I didn't get like super raged out about it. But I felt like. You know, I mentioned this in my article. The thing that it does, the wilds that it does is um, it reminds us that, yes, we are like other girls and that's okay. That's not a bad thing, right? Because mm-hmm. I I mean, I certainly went through that phase of, oh, I'm not like other girls. I'm cool or whatever. But yeah, I grew out of that. 
And I feel like the wilds does this thing where, you know, it's primary audience is younger teenage girls, maybe. Mm-hmm. And it reminds them it's okay to be like other girls. That's, what's going to get you through this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I loved that the 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 central conceit of the show is that women marooned on an island would basically act differently than men. It's like the anti Lord of the Flies, and mm-hmm. the however fucked up the setup is. And I can't wait to to find out what you wrote about it. I'm sure you'll point out what's problematic about it. I think we should probably do a few pieces on it because it's it's kind of crazy to think about. There's a lot going on. There's the, a lot the, going like. On. Yeah, the feminist message that they're trying to to set up or or poke holes in, I don't know. Um but I felt like that came through the growing sense of interreliance of the w- young women and the um mutuality of bearing burdens together and yeah. I liked that. That was a positive message for girls. Oh, there was that one scene where uh, Shelby just realized she doesn't have control over what's going on on the island or, you know, what was happening in her life before the island. And she cuts her hair. And I was Uh like, we've all been there, girl. We've all done that. Because when you feel like you have no control over anything in your life, then you turn to yourself. What can I do to myself? And sometimes Mm. it is just as harmless as cutting your hair. But then other times, you know, it gets worse. And we I feel like a lot of us have been there. I absolutely identify with Shelby as a as a former Midwestern evangelical Christian closet case. I definitely identify very strongly with Shelby. Um. Yeah, I thought the I think that's good. the thing about the wilds is there's something in every girl that some people for some of us, there's something in every girl that you can identify with. Like they took pieces of you and put them in these girls. Mm-hmm. 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 So I also wanted to mention, you know, as far as um beautiful actresses with giant eyeballs and haute couture, we had Victoria Pedretti and Bly Manor. We had Jody Comer and Killing Eve. And I can't, I have to mention um, Anya Taylor Joy in The Queen's Gambit, which mm. wasn't really a lesbian movie. However, there was one scene that kind of suggested a bisexual tryst. Tell me about, tell me about this scene. Well, it's, it's actually, it's, it's like some flirtation near the end of the season. And then she wakes up in the, in bed with a naked lady it's uh, not really a plot point, but you know I'm going to find bisexual and lesbian representation anywhere I where I can. Yeah, I'm we'll take our crumbs. Here. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm here for the secret suffix in any you know when the surprise suffix. Whenever you're watching something and all of a sudden there's a lesbian character and you're like, wow, that came out of nowhere. I love mm-hmm. it. Oh, that's so. Cool. So shows. Okay, so that's our top our top shows. What do we got next? What's the next category? Movies. Movies. I love movies. <laughs> Let's see how long we can go without mentioning Ammonite. <laughs> I, it was definitely going to be my first thing. Okay. Yeah, what other like, movies came out this year? Can you just help me remember what other movies came out? I really cannot help you remember because I can't remember. <laughs> the problem is... Oh, I wanted to mention one other show that was really good and had a secret surprise sapphic in it. And that is, sorry, we just changed subjects and I, I just want to go back because Killing Eve was produced, created by Phoebe Wallerbridge, mm-hmm. who had a show this year called Run, which was really good. And it got canceled. It was one season. It was like a thriller romantic comedy. What? My two favorite genres. But... Near the end of the season, Phoebe Wallerbridge plays a lesbian, and it's and it's she's a country lesbian. I got so excited; it was fantastic. <laughs> what was it called again? It's, just, I, it's called Run, and Phoebe Wallerbridge is okay. is hot. Um, okay. yeah. And where can the lesbians watch this? HBO. And and it might not even be worth it because there's only one season. So it's just like, it's, cr- you know, it's crushing to get to the end of a good show and you're like, there's nothing left to binge. 
But, oh, right. um, yeah. As far as movies go, I think that it's hard to remember them, not only because the sex scene in Ammonite broke my brain and That's maybe all I can think about. I'm sorry. That's all yeah, I can like, think about. Semi permanently. But also, we couldn't actually go to the movies. So yeah. there weren't, it was like the only thing that came out in 2020 was what you could stream on Netflix and Hulu. And. Mm-hmm you know you don't even know what's new because it all it could any of it could be having been produced at any time whatever so mm-hmm. anyway there was um there was happiest season and you know it had its flaws but it was it, it was fun it was also fun aubrey plaza did amazing in that movie yeah and i really loved the chemistry with her and k stew I bought that. You know, um, there was a movie that came out that was really well reviewed on After Ellen by a friend of mine, Allison Gray, and it was starring Bella Orne. And I want to give it a shout out because um, I guess this was like a really good movie. I mean, you should read her review. She basically thinks it was um, one of the best movies of the year for sure so i think uh, you gotta check it out and you know what was it even though it came out it's not even showing up on google i don't know so i think you should talk for a minute while i keep googling what the fuck this movie was uh, okay i'm movies? sorry now i have to go back to tv because i just okay, remembered <laughs> something <laughs> Is it time for a tangent? <laughs> Go on. Okay. Is it? I mean, is it a tangent if we're still kind of on course here? We're but on anything that you can watch. TV, yeah. So movies. TV movies. Same. same same thing. So yeah, Adventure Time had that special that came out last month that was just mm-hmm. about Princess mm-hmm. Bubblegum and Marceline. I know you don't do animated shows, but for I those know, of you who do, yeah, I thought it was excellent it was amazingly done um it's something that you know the younger audiences can watch and have fun because it's animated and it's like magical adventure etc but i feel like they understood that a lot of the people watching this are lesbian and bisexual women who grew up watching adventure time who grew up and followed their relationship throughout all of these seasons And it really does end with one of the characters going, hey, you know, I grew up. I Mm -hmm. don't have to, like, carry all of this rage and trauma with me anymore. Like, I'm... That's a beautiful message. Yeah, I'm ready to let it go. And, like, and her song that she sings, that's, like, you know, we... The way we grew up and the things that we did to cope, we don't need to be doing that anymore. And it's it's okay to let go of that and move on. I'm sorry. This is a cartoon and a musical? This sounds oh, yeah. unbearable. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not really a musical, but there are like it, anything having to do with Marceline because she's a musician. Okay. She will start singing. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Back to movies. I think we've we've danced around it. Okay. Oh, sorry. First of all, I did find out what the name of the movie is that okay. Alison Gray so highly recommended. The review is on After Ellen right now. The title of the film is Girl, and I guess it was really good. Um. Okay, I'm gonna check that thrilling out. Thrilling and mysterious. Yeah, check it out. So, yeah, I think that leaves us with Ammonite. I mean, it wasn't even that great of a movie for the first it's half really of the wasn't. movie, and then all of a sudden, it was the best fucking movie ever made, and <laughs> I, my heart was torn out. And uh why? It was like eight minutes of the best thing we've ever seen. Ever seen? Yeah. Those yeah. eight minutes, though. Those eight minutes. You know, I can't even say, like, the best thing I've ever seen. Because it was a multi- multi-sensory experience. I mean, I felt like I was there. I felt like I could taste it. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was, yeah. It's like, what can we say? Just, like, listen to our... If you listen to our Ammonite podcast, <laughs> you know that we were... Enough we were said. Had, we were experiencing <laughs> emotions, you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what other movies came out? Did um did any I think that really feels like that's it. 
Yeah, that's I'm it's also it. been the longest year on record. And so I feel like I can't remember anything that's even from before Halloween, you know? That seems like yeah. a lifetime ago. That was five hundred years ago. I can't but remember. But only that. for annoying reasons and you know, good vibes <laughs> only. I'm not yeah, even gonna touch on only. that. Yeah. Um were there I feel like there were like hotly anticipated um no that's it i think that was the only movie those are the only movies that had lesbians in them i can't yeah, remember literally much. anything else um okay cool what's the next what's the next category would you like to move on to music yes yes i would i have a lot to say about music so if you okay. want to start it right. off no 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 please i can like in. warms okay okay first of all everyone i know this year lasted 500 years but Earlier this year, Our Lady of Perpetual Bops, Carly Rae Jepsen, released Dedicated Side B, and that shit was banger after banger. Wow. Everybody slept on it. No one knew. I mean, we like you. Like, I feel like Carly Rae Jepsen is loved amongst all of my lesbian friends. Mm -hmm. We all love and appreciate. Is she a lesbian? She is not. But she's okay, loved so by she, lesbians. How did she make it into the top 2020 lesbian list? I don't know. I don't because really know lesbian culture. culture. Huh? She's lesbian culture is what yes. you're saying. Yes. Yeah, she's, she's so she beloved by so, lesbians. She, she is so beloved by so many lesbians. And mm-hmm, that's why I bring it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, okay, so it, it was it was called something about B-sides. But it wasn't it, B-sides. It was all bops. It was absolute bangers wow it was just it was so good it was so good like you can listen to the entire album straight through without skipping anything okay yeah yeah i think i might i might need to get into this um so speaking of people who aren't lesbians but who came out with albums taylor swift came out with two albums that's actually on my list because i knew you were really I okay, knew you were because, bring it up. okay, because did you know Taylor Swift is gay? I did not. I don't listen to her, so I'm going to let you take over for this part. Well, okay, the fact is that Taylor Swift isn't gay, but but the speculation of her closeted sexuality is all over the internet, and lesbians, mm-hmm. a certain type of Taylor Swift lesbian, is very committed mm-hmm. to rumors that she's you know been with god now i have to google it why do i like start talking about things that i can't back up and uh, it's just like already out of my mouth taylor swift lesbian rumors damn you can really just google that taylor swift lesbian rumors like a shit ton of results yeah third third result taylor swift is gay and here's the evidence to prove it oh my god there's there's a lot of lyrics in the songs on these last two albums, these back-to-back albums in 2020 that are very, that are kind of coded. Mm-hmm. So, like, people talk a lot about Betty and, yeah, you know, I guess she, I guess she was. Is that like a Jolene situation where we're like, mm, Dolly, you're a little uh, obsessed with Miss Jolene there. So. yeah there's uh okay so so i found it so carly claus is i guess who she was supposed to have hooked up with mm-hmm. anyway someone who is actually bisexual phoebe bridgers came out with an incredible fucking album uh she came out with an incredible album the year before and the year before that i mean she is the queen of all of my dreams and she's at the top of my 2020 list just because i spent probably three months learning how to finger pick motion sickness on guitar and it was really challenging it it really took up like you know at least one of my three brain cells for i'm telling you months it's not even that hard of a if song. I, like if a person I, can, plays if I can relearn how to finger pick, you certainly can. Oh my god, it was so challenging. Was, I've never finger picked anything before, but it's tuned in D, open D, 
mm. or open D flat, what whatever it is, it's like an open tuning. So it it's it's like a couple fingers at a time that you're fretting. It's not any fucking thing complicated, and yet it, it's I guess it's just all about timing. Guitar is hard. Banjo is so much easier. But you did it. I tried. Um. So songs, you, I know you have more songs because you wrote this whole article about uh, K-pop lesbian undertones. Tell us about that. God, are we going to? Okay, well, are you ready for me to TED talk about Red Velvet now? <laughs> I think so. I think that the audience is ready. <laughs> okay. Okay. So they haven't done much as a group, like the five of them haven't done much this year for various reasons, um, because one of them was out with an injury, obviously. So two of them decided to uh, create a subunit and put out a little album on their own. And this album was so good. Like, it was so good. First of all, um, one of the songs, Monster, which I mentioned in this um, article. So the music video was based on The Handmaiden. I don't remember Mm -hmm. if you remember that movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was that was a great song. Uh, I did a cover of it. If you That's guys want to watch that. Um, <laughs> I'm not even, not even done though, but if you've seen their album cover, um, let me pull it up right now. Have you seen their, the cover that they use like on iTunes or whatever. Um, that was actually inspired, supposedly inspired by the poster for, right. So the, the, um, <laughs> the poster. The, yeah. Yeah. It was, supposedly inspired by blues the warmest color that poster oh okay but it was very lesbian it was it was um overtones it was really hard to 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 say that they're you know they're not i i honestly like in my brain i'm like there's no fucking way that at least not one of them is straight you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but and then they did naughty and I know you've watched the video for this because I've sent it to you like 15 times. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, and that choreography like blew everyone's mind. It wasn't enough for them to just do tutting, but they had to do finger tutting, right? Ooh, I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means. It's like real close up of you? their hands, right? Okay. And I... so there was just the the... Like in Monster, where you had one of them was controlling the other, and then in Naughty, the other one was controlling the other one, right? And they had all of these, Uh like, little details in their videos that are like, oh, is that what that means? And it's, you you guys just have to watch it. I think both of those are um, in the the article about Mm K-pop. Yeah, I think so. And I feel like, I'm sorry, but I feel like I have to explain why I've become so attached to this group. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if this is this can't just be me, but when during like bad periods of my life, I'll just grow attached to a band. You know, like if I'm mm-hmm. I can't process my anger, so I'll attach myself to a band that is very, very angry sounding. Right? If I'm feeling lost uh-huh. or this becomes your primary right, release, like so that, just, you turn right? Yeah, and it's, time. it's that right. So this mm-hmm. is another bad time in my life but i'm older now i've been to therapy well, I good can- vibes only <laughs> i'm getting there i'm getting please there your feelings. Please tell us your feelings. I, I can you know i i can better process my anger i don't okay. feel so lost in who i am right now i'm you know i'm better able to process my emotions but i there's one thing that i can't give myself that this group managed to give me during this terrible time in my life and that's happiness that's so beautiful oh my god i can't i can't give it to myself right now but then i listen to them and it's like oh okay now i feel a little better you know Mm -hmm. so it's just another one of those periods in my life and i've just attached to them that's that's beautiful um are you a king princess fan nope Uh, i i'm not much either although before 2020 really took off i was actually in los angeles with the owners of after ellen at a king princess concert Mm -hmm. i brought her because she came out with a song but it sounds like neither of us care about it i think that a lot of lesbians would probably put it in their top 20 list just because it's king princess but did you i don't know she me um a little bit with her 
with Cheap Queen, just like as an album. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, you know who I really loved, especially at the beginning of the year, um, Cheka was putting out a ton of shit and also, you know, like going out to protests and getting arrested and posting constantly about like calls to action. I mean, both musically and socially and politically, she just had an incredible year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I love like hearing her play acoustic guitar on some of these tracks. Um, a lot of bangers and a lot of grooves. Nice. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What else was good? Oh, that's all I got. Oh, come on. We know, we know other lesbian musicians, surely. I, you know. Haley Kyoko didn't do anything this year. (laughs) Did she not? No. Um, She didn't release anything, I don't think. I think then it's time for the next category, huh? Okay, but what was your song? Like, your song? My main song, my number one song. Um, Probably Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers (laughs) or Kyoto or um, really anything on her new album, Punisher, and also Invisible String by Taylor Swift. Those are in a tie. And like I said, Taylor Swift's gay, so it counts. Okay. That counts. Okay. How about yours? Um, Definitely Red Velvet. Mm-hmm. Psycho by Red Velvet. It came out really late, like December 20th or something in 2019. So I feel like that counts. Yeah, yeah, that counts basically. Just like just to listen to like that last 30 seconds of the song where they're just repeating, hey, now we'll be okay. And it's 3 okay. a.m. and I'm crying and it's like, yeah, maybe we will be okay. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. hold on till, till tomorrow. Um, yeah, and all, all right, next honestly, category. Irene and Sulgi's entire album is just full of bops. So. Okay, um, next category. That's where we left off. Right. So just general lesbian moments that happened this year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, okay. Well, um, there were big moments. I, f- I felt um, excited when it came to politics. You know, Kamala Harris had named a lesbian to her mm-hmm. cabinet. I can't remember what this woman's name is. Um, but that made me feel really good inside. And I also just, I'm going to be a basic bitch here. I love Kamala Harris. So yeah, just knowing that she was putting lesbians in power, um, made me happy. I think it was her chief of staff. Yeah, it was. writing about her. Jean-Pierre, Karine Jean-Pierre. I don't know. I just love that. That made me so happy. Right, right. What else? Oh, you know, and Sue Bird got engaged. Oh, that's right. There were a bunch of lesbian marriages. Oh my God, we oh we should have had an entire category for lesbian marriages because so many women got married. I mean, micro married. Like, what are you gonna do? There's ten people here in your backyard. Yeah, right. Raven Simone also got married. Raven Simone. That's kind of who I was thinking of. Her wedding was so beautiful. But I also um I feel worried. I feel worried about all child stars. Mm-hmm. This is going to be, yeah. you know, this is going to be a tough year for them. This first year of your marriage and yeah. Yeah, who else got yeah. married? It's the soccer, went, like Subert and, and Rapino got engaged, but there's yeah. other, Crashlin. Yes, that was, right? they got married late, late last year. God, and they wore the ugliest outfits. Oh my God, wait, that was last year? That was in 2019? That was... Well, December, wow. like late December. I think it was like okay, December of 27th. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm counting that. Listen, you if know. you are like a soccer, like a women's soccer fan, you know that that's on brand for them to wear <laughs> these weird ass outfits. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Do soccer lesbians have, I feel like they have a combination of poor and adventuresome taste. It's like the double whammy of being totally fine uh with all eyes on you and also just having no sense 
I'm yeah, I mean, you kind of just accept it and you mm. don't really think about it anymore once you've been a fan long enough. It's part of the and it could charm. Just, it could just be part of the NWSL curse. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, their fashion is cursed. And the it's whole uh, is cursed. So uh, I yeah. I I'd heard. I'd read it in an article on after Ellen.com. Oh, um, I wonder who wrote that article. <laughs> <laughs> Our resident sports writer. Um, okay, so we diverted onto the topic of best uh micro weddings. Backyard COVID weddings. Oh my god, I said it. I said it. I'm so sorry. That was bad vibes. That was not rainbow rhythms. Um <laughs> But before we got on the topic of micro weddings, we were talking about what? What were we talking uh, about? Just general, just, just like general, lesbian just moment. general yeah. lesbian moments. Okay. Yeah. I'm the one who's on drugs. You have to, you have to hold it together. You have to remember why, where we left why off. Why do you assume I have any brain cells left at this point? Like <laughs> that's that's your job to babysit me a tiny bit. <laughs> Okay, do you have any do you have any just general lesbian moments that you want to be like this happened this year and it was great? I um got promoted from managing editor at afterellen.com to editor in chief and it felt really good and important and special. And it was a very very hard time. And I love I've that journey a- for you, queen. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a bumpy road, but I love it so much. I love um, getting to talk to famous and important people. And I love doing the podcast. I love talking to like movie directors, especially. And I talked to um, this woman, Lisa Sellen Davis, who wrote the book Tomboy, which is about okay. like the the phenomenon of, of gender nonconformity in young girls and or or just in girls in general but um yeah so that that was like the best lesbian thing for me about 2020 i felt like i just had a great year um in lesbianism i love that journey for you queen <laughs> how about we were, you i think we were all excited when you became editor-in-chief like we were all ready to party when we heard the news wow you're so sweet um yeah well it's just and for me, um, it's just starting this podcast and like just doing it because it's this is so way out That's of so my comfort fun. zone. So fun. But really, what you seem very comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is, <laughs> this is so way out of my comfort zone. But I thought um, when you all first asked me to to interview um, Daria, that w- yeah, Dar- that Sonia was- Deville. Yeah, that was so out of my comfort zone. That is not something that I ever thought I would do. But I was just like, what if I did it? And I did it. Yeah, you were such a natural at it. I mean, that first podcast, I think you did a great job. You you definitely have uh, the voice and the insightful questions that really make, in my opinion. <laughs> you are so kind. Thank you for your kindness. Which I is weird because I hate how my voice sounds. Really? Oh, yeah. I think your voice is fantastic. Yeah, I think anybody who hears their voice recorded has a similar experience of like, that's not me. I don't recognize that mirror. That is not. But I feel I feel pretty well adjusted to it now. It takes a long time, though. It's kind of an out of body experience for the first 200 times. Right. And I just want to if I could give a quick shout out to all of our listeners who have been following us on this podcast. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for being with us, you know, during this time and watching us grow and being patient with us as we learn. Oh and I hope it's that so you'll, fun. T- you'll take care of us in the coming year. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, like, click, subscribe, share, leave comments, leave us a review on iTunes. Does that mean the podcast is over because I made the uh, <laughs> the call out for attention? <laughs> nah, you can you can do it again at the end because I think we should also mention what were our favorite articles that went up this year. 
Oh, that's such a great category. I've got to say that the, oh, you know, we didn't do books. We didn't do the category of books and I oh, had a good one, but books. I'm going to save it. Okay, I'm going to save it. For, okay. No, let's no, do no. books after then. <laughs> let's do books after. I have to save this for an article now. Um, yeah. So definitely by far the only thing I can remember writing in all of 2020 is that Ammonite review, mm-hmm. um, which was so fun. And I, yeah, I love writing movie reviews. It's the most fun part of the job, in my opinion. And this but is why you're going to write that, more next year. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I will. I kind of, oh, I'm really having trouble remembering the boundaries of 2020. I can't remember what might have happened in 2019 or in 2018 because so much of 2020, it's, you know what? We're not going to go there because this is a good vibes only podcast. Good vibes only. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I almost went to the dark place. <laughs> <laughs> Turning right around. Um, yeah. So that was my favorite article. What about you? Um, I really like the article we put out um, giving D trans women a voice and a place to like speak up, you know, cause I feel like a lot of the time they're not given, you know, a space to share their experiences. Mm-hmm. So I thought okay, that was well, really cool. but I didn't write that one, but I'm just saying that I thought it was really cool that we did. Yeah, that. that was written by Meg Seymour and it was a really good article and it was mm-hmm. a very in-depth piece and it was you know, she really created a safe space for those women to share because there were some very honest insights in there. Mm-hmm. And to her incredible credit, you know, she gave these women the room to be honest about something that is so misunderstood and unknown and um, never talked about, you know, completely taboo. So... But I thought this category was about stuff we'd written, and now I feel very narcissistic oh. because I pointed out my own article, and then you pointed out oh. Meg's article. <laughs> you so. can't ask me to to pick because I don't I don't know what it is with me and my writing that I just can't like be like, oh, this was great, guys. You you know, like I'm still at that point. Yeah, but you're such a good writer. Oh, thank you so much for thinking so. You're an excellent writer. Um, what was my favorite piece of yours this year? Uh you had some funny ones. You had some funny lists. I can't remember, but I always laugh when I read your stuff. That's the only I reason, really... like one of the only reasons I ever got into writing is just for me, reading was always an escape and always a way for me to, to feel better when I wasn't feeling great. So I've always mm-hmm. just wanted to write things, you know, to help people feel a little bit better. Mm-hmm. I really liked uh, Madeline Webster had a couple articles this year. She had one that was about femme fashion that I loved. Mm. Um, She also had a really touching one about the Supreme Court nomination of Amy Coney Barrett and the outcome of that. And that was, you know, that was a really difficult topic because it was such an emotionally charged piece of news and it was sure to have a lot of really intense reactions around it. And she came from it from this place of, you know, it was very personal to her. And I think that, you know, so many women reading that could identify with the feeling of fragility or vulnerability that you, you don't know, you can't even imagine the future because um, you know, I kind of think I'm going into the bad vibes zone. So I'm just going to rewind a tiny bit. <laughs> no, it's okay. The article's really good and everyone should read it. There you go. There you go. Yeah. You know what else? Um, I also got a kick this year out of I Claire Hu Chan. God, did I say that right? Claire, I'm so embarrassed if I didn't say that right. Hu Chan. Hu Chan. Um, I always love her writing and she wrote several excellent movie and book reviews this year and i just love that whenever i get a review in from her of something that i've already consumed whether it's music books or tv i always think that we'll agree on it i always just go into it thinking of course we (laughs) share so much in common and we like you know we, we seem to live very 
mutual lives from afar across continents um and then she just has a completely different take and i always think it's so funny like i'm like who has, who has terrible taste here because it's definitely one of us <laughs> we have opposite takes oh but she is an amazing writer and i do look up to her so it was when i finally got to meet her i was like a little starstruck that's awesome yeah, we need to have a lot of writers happy hours. And you know what? It might be fun to invite our readers to RSVP too, our readers and listeners. Oh, Maybe yeah, why not? those of you who are liked, clicked, and subscribed to this podcast can let us know what you would think about that if you got to hang out on a Zoom call with the After Ellen writers. Doesn't that sound fun? I just literally just like, came up make with Make it like a little moment, raffle so. or something, right? Like whoever wins. I might just be high because I have been smoking this entire podcast long, but I think that would be really fun. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, why not? Who can stop us? Mm. So did we did we outline all of our top twenties in in or our 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 tops in twenty twenty? All right, let's we, recap real quick. So movie. What is the movie? TV. <laughs> yeah, TV movies. Let's recap. So um, just, pick, just pick one. I think Bly Manor is the winner for, for TV. Oh, definitely. Right? Definitely. On yeah. that. Uh, Ammonite, obviously, for movies. Those eight minutes in Ammonite. <laughs> <laughs> were all the movies that I needed to see in 2020. Just those <laughs> eight minutes. Um, okay, what else? What was our next category? Music. No, you wrote down music. Mine is everything Phoebe Bridgers has ever touched. Okay. Yeah, mine for 2020, music, it's Irene and Sylvie. They killed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, ne what's next? Your top, your top 2020 moment. Oh, yeah, just oh, my my exciting ascendancy as the <laughs> editor chief of after Ellen. yeah i i don't know if i can pick just one top moment it's just doing these podcasts top moment don't think about just these yeah, these top these that. little moments that we have when we do these podcasts Aww. for me yeah yeah i think that's it i think that's that's rounding up the whole 2020 i think we're done yeah we'll see you next all year right. guys all right loyal listeners you know what to do um share this podcast with your friends leave us comments tell us what you like tell us what you want to hear more of and thank you for listening in 2020 this has been so fun and yeah we're just happy to be here we sure are <laughs> all right goodbye